Hey, what's up? In this video, we're gonna go over how to import a custom 3D model like this motorcycle here using Blender and websites like Sketchfab or really anywhere you can get 3D models. Hey, what is up? Today, we're going to look at how to import 3D models into CineTracer. And as an example, we're going to be using this 3D motorcycle from Sketchfab. To start, you're going to need to go to Blender. Blender is required for this workflow uh, for it to be reliable anyway. So you can get Blender for free on PC or Mac, go ahead and download it and get it installed. So the first step is uh, we're going to download this model. This one happens to be free. You're gonna click on download. And if you've never worked in 3D before, there's all sorts of different formats like JPEGs and PNGs and TIFFs for images. There's all sorts of formats for 3D ones. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to go over all of them, but ones that Blender can handle are going to be OBJ and GLTF, which is a converted one. So we're gonna download actually the OBJ here, and that's just gonna go into a zip file. Okay, so here we are in the downloads folder. You'll see that I've already kind of done these before. These were my testing ones. You're going to wanna right click and extract them to their own folder. And for the motorcycle, um, I think that's uh, this one here, the Super Soko. You're going to get something with textures. You don't really care about that source. And I think you have to unzip this again. And what you're going to get is an OBJ file, a texture map, and a material file. So this is going to get us started. And let's head over to Blender. OK, so here we are in Blender 3.1.2, very recent. Uh, this tutorial is aimed at for people who have never used Blender before. And I always forget how to use it because I use Maya primarily. But we're going to hit A. And delete everything you also could have just like selected it or selected it all here and we're going to go to file import and in this case we're importing an obj so we'll go to downloads uh, mine got called this soko again source and soko.obj uh, on my computer you get this weird icon when you bring in uh, obj's like that so we're going to scroll in and by default which i recommend working in default uh, blender units which if you look here is is meters is metric so just just leave that as it is each one of these squares is like a square meter that's the same thing in the synergy or grid map actually it looks very similar so the first thing we want to do is get this thing uh, out of the floor this yellow line here a green line that's like the zero point we don't want it in the floor because it'll be in the floor in Cinetracer. so what we want to do is bring it up like this I clicked on this kind of like move uh, icon over here and now it is above the ground. Uh, really quickly to move around in Blender, it's middle mouse click, does this, middle mouse click and drag, shift, middle mouse click, pans, and scrolling will get you moving uh, in and out like that. And you can click on these things to get into orthographic and then middle mouse to get back, it's pretty nice. So it's above the ground, this is great. However, if you look over here, you'll see that we basically just moved its location up and if you were to import this into Cinetracer as it is, it would actually uh, go back in the ground. And what we have to do to every mesh, right? This is a mesh up here. So sometimes your, your models might have multiple. Every mesh, you need to click on it, Control A, and we're going to apply all transforms. This basically will zero all this back out. And this object's pivot or origin is there now. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know why. Uh, just the way that Cinetracer reads FBX files, it can't handle if these are weird numbers. So you have to, again, click it, control A, all transfers. You have to do that to every mesh. So it's like, okay, where are the materials though? That's, you know, half of what makes photogrammetry look good. If you click on this little button here, you now have a material preview. It's looking pretty nice. And uh, something we want to look at is to check out the materials on this. One way to do that is to go to this little sphere over here. And then this is the material. This is the material that's on it. So the one rule for Cinetracer is that if you have one mesh, which is this, it can only have one material on it. And I will show you how to prep photogrammetry meshes from Sketchfab that have multiple. You can fix that. You can change that right here in Blender. It's really easy. But to start, we are pretty good now because again, we have one mesh with one material on it. And if the material has a texture like this one, uh, it'll show up right here in base color. And uh, if you were to move the texture, which we might do, uh, this is where you would have to repoint and find that texture. So, okay, so this is a suggested file 
uh, format for you or you know hierarchy to follow. You don't have to, but it's it's kind of recommended if you're getting started with this stuff. We're in our downloads folder, and in here again is our OBJ and our texture that we opened. However, I have a folder on my desktop, which is right here. I'm just calling it like CT import FBX. We are going to put everything in here that we're going to import. And the reason we're going to do this is because CineTracer is using full file paths to find all of these things. So if you just download this and start loading it up into CineTracer, you might eventually delete this or move it. CineTracer will not like that. Just like an NLE, when you're editing, the files need to stay in, in one place. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to take this texture here, copy and paste it into this folder. We're just going to dump everything into one folder so that it'll always be there. So that's something that's recommended. And once you move this texture, uh, we're going to need to do something in Blender. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So we're back in Blender and we're going to save this FBX folder. But what we want to do is make sure that this texture is the one in our new folder. That's really important. It, you don't want it to be the one in the downloads folder and class, in unless like you never delete your download folder or something like that, which seems kind of unlikely. So again, to get to this point, you're going to want to click on the model, then this little sphere here. This might be closed for you. This is base color and it's going to have this uh, texture here. We're going to want to click on this little folder. And for me, this is on desktop and I got a lot of stuff going on in here. Um, should I clean this up? Desktop, where is it? Oh yeah, wait, CT, here we go. So we moved it here. This is that texture map. We'll double click it and we'll see that nothing changed, but we basically just pointed to the new texture. So that's an important part. So. Uh, last, as we're getting out of here, again, make sure this is all zeroed out. Control A, all transforms. This thing is good to go. We're going to go to File, Export, FBX, very important. And we're going to go back to, well, I'm not used to <laughs> Blender, uh, Desktop here. And we're going to write uh, Bike01, something like that. And the good part about this is we don't have to change any of these settings. I have basically set up my importer to work with stock settings. So basically don't change anything here, except for maybe like selected objects only. Like if you had a lot of things in the scene, you could select what you wanted to export. You would then click this. So I'm gonna export just the bike. And there it goes, let's hop into CineTracer. Okay, so here we are in CineTracer. I'm gonna go to editor mode and hit tab. And something that's new for this update is this utility button or category. And this is new, this stuff is old, but um, these are like utility objects and there's going to be more coming in here. So what we have new is the FBX importer. We're going to click it and we get this little 3D icon and we're going to turn this into that motorcycle. So what you'll see here uh, to start is that we have basically just one option. These are, these are for later and we're going to select FBX and we get my, not my favorite file system in the, system in the world, but I, I had to write this and uh, still trying to make it better. But we're going to travel all the way to our desktop and find that folder, or is it this one? And we are going to import bike01.fbx like this and click OK. Give it a second. And there is our bike. Pretty cool, right? We can load in almost anything, kind of. We can load in very basic things to start, uh, which will be very cool. So um, you can just go find 3D models you want and bring them right in. So as far as options, what you'll see here is that this can be scaled and it's going to default to 100, which is what Blender files are going to want, Blender FBXs, but you can scale it down really small and it allows it to scale up to 200, but 100 is going to keep it at scale. Um, next up are options here. If you're working in Blender and you're exporting the way I just showed you, don't change any of this stuff, but it doesn't break it. It just flips some stuff. This is going to spin it. This is for supporting other types of FBXs. Every 3D program exports FBXs differently. You basically don't have to worry about that if you're using Blender. If you want a little reminder on how this workflow works, uh, we have it for Maya and for Blender. Uh, again, it's just work and default units, so don't change anything, just work how it comes in. It's Z up, metric. Import the models. Very important, you have to apply your transforms. Each mesh can only have one material, and uh, materials can support a diffuse or color map and a normal map. I don't think the, no the normal map's working especially well, but the diffuse map works. And then you're gonna export just like we did there. So that wraps it up for this video. This is the basics of importing really anything from Blender. Uh, but then in this case, how to get something from say Sketchfab 
that's an OBJ into Blender, prepped, and sent to CineTracer. In future videos, I can go over some basic 3D modeling um, techniques in Blender to make like a quick room and do it to scale and whatnot. And then of course now that can be brought right into CineTracer. This is um, gonna be really cool. And there's also some more uh, difficult models to work with like really big photogrammetry. Like you could go bring in like an entire city or at least like a big chunk of a city. That's gonna require a little bit of work in Blender first. So I will uh, be covering that process as well. And I'll see you on the next video.